Hi, welcome back to this series of videos on the Feynman Heaviside formula for the electric and magnetic fields from a general moving point charge. And um, what I want to emphasize in this formula is that there are no approximations in this formula. This is relativistically valid. The particle could be moving any way, accelerating, non-accelerating, going backwards and forth. This formula is valid. So, I'll start uh, just with a very, very brief review of electromagnetism to set the notation. Um, first of all, against my better judgment, because uh, the book by Zangwill is written in MKS units, I'm going to use MKS units for this video, which goes against my general preconceptions for a theoretical physicist to always use CGS or natural units. So, just to set the stage, C is 1 over the square root epsilon zero mu zero mu zero is exactly defined as four pi times ten to the minus seven I think the units are newtons per ammeter squared um, okay so here are uh, Maxwell's equations um, another thing in this video I don't usually do it when I'm working out problems and I'm probably going to forget, but I'm going to try and put vectors on every bold symbol so that you can see what's a vector in a scalar. So the divergence of E is the charge density over epsilon zero, Gauss's law. The curl of E is equal to minus the partial of B with respect to T. Faraday's law, the divergence of B equals zero, Gauss's law for magnetic magnetism, and then the uh, Ampere's law, the curl, curl of B is equal to mu zero times the current density plus one over C squared, the partial of the electric field with respect to time. So these are Maxwell's equations, very nice equations. And here are the solutions. I'm going to write the solutions in Lorentz gauge. And um, as every book will tell you right now, the Lorentz is not the Lorenz that you usually see in Maxwell's equations, it's another guy who never gets the credit, but it's actually his gauge without the T in his name. So this gauge is the, uh, the divergence of um, A plus 1 over C, the vector potential plus 1 over C squared, the partial of the scalar potential is equal to zero. This is a covariant gauge. And um, the fields themselves are given by E equals minus del phi minus the partial of A with respect to T. And B is equal to the curl of A. Okay. Um, one more thing. In this video, if you look at the Feynman Heaviside formula, you see I wrote down the formula for E, and then I just wrote B equals minus or plus, if, depending on which notation you use, ER cross E over C. Um, I'm only going to de derive the electric formulas. The magnetic formulas can easily be derived in a very similar way, and I'll leave that as an exercise for you. Um, I did it, and it's not hard at all. So. Um, I, I'm just going to save some time and just do the electric ones first. Okay, the solutions. Now the scalar potential, phi, is given by 1 over 4 pi epsilon 0. The integral over all space, d3 r prime. Okay, this should be phi of r and t. This is the position where the field is measured. This is the time. The integral over all space of the charge density at R prime. But 
not at time t. This is what's called the retarded time. T minus absolute value of R minus R prime over C. Well, divide this by the absolute value of R minus R prime. So, this is the scalar potential, the vector potential, A, R comma T, is exactly the same, except where I have rho, I put, well, the constants, instead of being, first of all, I left off the, um, I think I left off the charge Q, and here it would be mu of zero Q over four pi. So the constants change a little bit. Everything else is the same, except rho goes to J. I don't have enough room to write it down anymore. And um, so these are Maxwell's equations. These are the retarded solutions. Feynman in chapter 20 of volume 2 on his um, chapter 21 volume 2 derives these formulas or shows that they satisfy the the wave equations and everything. I'm not going to go through that. That's uh, covered in all the textbooks and they show that in good detail. And um, so in the next video I'm going to discuss what the retarded variables are. I'm going to set the notation and um, and then we'll start calculating the uh, Lyonard Weichart, however you pronounce it, potentials. I know Lyonard is French. He's probably got some kind of accent over there or something. The other guy is German and I'm not sure how to pronounce his name. Okay, I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.